In the last couple of videos, we developed a theory of interactions for scalar particles. Now it's time to do the same things for spinners. Spinners tend to be tricky, so it's important to watch the previous videos on spinners. Let's begin. Remember that spinner particles such as electrons satisfy the Dirac equation. For simplicity, let's define an electron as any particle associated with a spinner field. In high energy physics, we can approximate the electron as massless, so we need to solve the massless Dirac equation. Remember that the Dirac spinner has four components, and we can group these four components into a left chiral spinner and a right chiral spinner. We can define the chirality operator like this to define left-handed particles as having chirality of minus one, and right-handed particles as having a chirality of positive one. We can see that in the high energy limit, the left and right hand spinners are independent components of the Dirac pi spinner, which is different to what we see when we solve the Dirac equation in the rest frame. For right-handed spinner particles, we can get the solution for the spinner. We can choose a solution where the spinner has a square root of 2e, so that the inner product of the spinner will give 2e, which will be helpful when calculating scattering amplitudes. Notice how the spinner must be spin up. This actually makes sense when we look at another property called helicity. Helicity is a spin of a particle projected onto its direction of momentum. Helicity is equal to chirality for massless particles since the direction of momentum is Lorentz invariant. So since the spinner will describe a right moving particle, it must be spin up. If this particle is traveling to the left, then the particle would have to be spin down. The same argument applies to left helicity particles, with directions flipped. Note that this only applies in the high energy limit. Now we have to do the same thing, but for antiparticles. Solving this equation, we get what seems to be the same solutions. But when we add the helicity operator on the left Kral spinner, we get positive one. This can be explained if we say that the antiparticle has negative energy. So this means that what corresponds to spin up and spin down is flipped for anti-spinners. This argument isn't convincing to me, since antiparticles do not actually have negative energy, so maybe there's a better explanation. But what if a particle is traveling in some general momentum direction? Well, we can write the momentum 4 vector like this, which leads to these equations for left and right Kirchhoff spinners in some general momentum direction. These equations are going to be useful when calculating QED scattering amplitudes, where angles become relevant. Now we can take what we learned and drive the LSE formula for fermions. I recommend watching the video on driving the LSE formula for scalars since we'll use the same steps. Now the particular LSE formula we get will depend on what kind of particles we have in the in and out states. A popular thing to calculate is the probability an electron and positron go in and out. We can write the equation operator like this. We can prove this explicitly by calculating this integral and using the inner product of spinners. Doing some more stuff and some more math tricks we get these equations over here. Then we can plug them back into the LSE formula. Like before, to calculate the matrix elements, we have to calculate the VEV of the correlation function. Again, we can use the Gelman load theorem to relate this to the interacting Hamiltonian. In today's video, we learned how to solve the massless Dirac equations and interpreted this, the Hilsey solutions of antiparticles. We also draft the LSE formula for fermions. In the next video, we'll be describing how spinner particles and scalar particles interact. Thanks for watching.